and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and then the knitting community that we love. And we do it all, of course, with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Frivolous Dawn. Uh, let's see, in our family's birth order, I am fourth of eight children. You are. <laughs> and I am Frugal Miss Penny. I am the oldest of the eight children. And Dawn and I are tickled pink to see you and to know that you are participating in our episode this week. So welcome to all of our returning viewers and participants. You have no idea how much we value your participation and involvement in our threads, both on YouTube and Ravelry. So we hope we can give back to you this week. And for those of you who are first time viewers, we are so glad you're with us. We hope that you, like our returning viewers, will glean a little nugget or two from our learnings throughout the week. So without further ado, grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and a sense of humor because you're going to need it. This is episode 40 of Frivolous and Frugal. Take it away, Dawn. Oh, you're going to need it. Absolutely right. Um, so let me see. I love what you're wearing around your neck. Oh, and I bet you know exactly what it is. It is <laughs> The Hitchhiker by Martina Baim. And this would also resonate very closely with Miss Dawn because this was the fiber we used. And I say we collectively, those of us from Magpie's Cottage who were going to or who went to ZK 2019, was it Dawn? I think it was, yeah. Think so. Yeah, from Blue Doxy Dye Works. And I knit mine on a size four. So it's just one of those shawls that everybody needs at least one. And so on the frugalometer, I gave it a two for the pattern and for the fiber, I gave it $3 signs. But I have got to hear what you are wearing. Well, before you oh, go on, Hitchhiker yeah. is a great shawl for new knitters. Absolutely. I, I think agree. it teaches you a little bit. You get to see it grow. You end it when you want to end it. Um, I just think Good it's point. a great, and I think everybody needs like six of them, don't you think? I would agree. <laughs> in, in speaking of that, Dawn, if you are a new knitter, here is one of the techniques you're going to learn, and that's how to bind off. Yeah. And so you're not binding off a lot of stitches all at one time. You're just binding off a few, and it'll help you learn about tension during bind off. So very good point, Dawn. Thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, and again, you knit it as long as you want it mm -hmm. or until your yarn runs out, whichever comes first. <laughs> <laughs> and we want you to knit every centimeter of that yarn. <laughs> I don't even know what a centimeter is, but okay. <laughs> well, for you, this is like a centimeter. <laughs> really, I'm only down to one skein, order more. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Well, this was one of the shawls I knit this year. Um, I called it my dream shawl because I wanted so desperately to learn brioche enough to be able to do this. So this is the Sizzle Pop by Leslie Ann Robinson. Um, it is brioche, obviously. I shouldn't say obviously, if you don't know, it's brioche. The black that you see in the background is by Leading Men Fiber Arts. It's in their Diva base and the color is darkest hour. And then this light yarn, you guys, I am just in love with. Let's see if I can get it up. It's called Metallurgy. So you see a little bit of bronze and some silver and light specks of gold. That is by Northbound Knitting. That um, dyer is Lisa Much, who is also, well, she's their dyer and she's also a designer. Oh. Um, and this was knit on, I think it was, oh, and I didn't write it down. I'm pretty sure it was a size four. I did it with um, my friend, Miss Pam. And it is, this, this hurt my brain. I finally got the hang of it, but I needed to just focus on it and get to where I could read my knitting. And um, gosh, I love it. It's real lightweight. It's both of them are a merino silk um, component and um, I'd be tempted to do something else with that metallurgy. I just, and I'd Ooh. had that like for three years, I think, because I saw somebody do the shawl in these colors 
and I wanted to do it. So, um, yep. And I'm going to say probably the pattern two, maybe two dollar signs on the frugalometer and gosh, silk yarn. Um, I'm going to say it probably had to go at least three, if not four um, dollar signs on the frugalometer, but I love silk. <laughs> oh, I <love> silk. Yes, <laughs> and I do. hope nothing ever spills on this because I never have to wash it. Um, <laughs> Or like I was telling Penny, this hides a multitude of sins too, because I could have spilled my breakfast all the way down the front of my shirt and you would never know that now. So. <laughs> no, we wouldn't, but we're sure going to be looking for it next week. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So sizzle pop, I would encourage you if you are um, feeling like you need a brioche challenge, any of Leslie Ann Robinson's patterns, she's a phenomenal brioche knitter. Um, I would not recommend it though for a beginning brioche. Okay. So I would do a couple other things first to learn how to increase and decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's um, your little Mo head? Oh, that's background. Monique. <laughs> Monique. Because the fireplace is going, I could not put up. Oh. Um, yeah, Miss Opal. Because who, I would not be paying attention and she'd be in flames or melting. So <laughs> Monique is on the mantle and she is wearing the Luwak hat. L-U-U-K. I've knit a couple of those, but yeah. this one was part of um, 45, uh, hashtag 45 hats, 45 designers. It is knit in Plymouth coffee beans. So of course I gave that a, a $1 sign on the frugalometer and it's just full of ripples, just fun little ripples all the way up. The pattern gives you two options for the crown. I just knit the crown and then added a pom-pom with uh, Plymouth Encore. So fun little hat. That pattern is by Annis Jones or Annis Jones. So if you are a new knitter, once again, great hat pattern. It'll help you learn how to switch from knit to purl. So. Oh, good. That's what yeah. it is. And good. Uh, what is your beautiful Miss Ruby sporting today. Well, because um, in the United States, we're about to hit Advent. I don't know if that's worldwide. I assume it is. But um, this was the Advent um, shawl that I knit this year. It was the it was a mystery knit along Advent shawl 2016. And it's by Bridget Koch. She does one every year. And some of the gals at Sil Silver Thimble here in Green Bay are getting ready to start her new one this year. But it was just your typical, um, every week we did a different section that has a different texture pattern. And then of course, beads separate it. Very well written pattern. Um, I understand she has phenomenal support through her Ravelry groups for the mystery knit alongs. That yarn is um, Salka, it's by Maricel and it's Salka Legato. And this is in the pink colorway. Yeah, so it's really more like a dark, um, fuchsia maybe. Yeah. Now the only thing I would say is um, I love long rectangles, like hundred inch rectangle shawls. So that one's a little short. So you can see that um, I would probably not wear it the way it's shown on the mannequin. I would probably just roll it a little bit and put it around my neck. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I kind of forgot about it. And since Advent is starting, um, especially all the people who do the Advent um, sets. I think that starts December 1st, which is this week. So that is kind of my tribute to Advent because I have no plans for um, doing anything in the um, Advent mini world. So this year anyway. Yeah, so that is what Miss Ruby is wearing. Well, um, I don't have much to add this week, but I am still working on Audrey's cardigan. And for those of you who have been following, um, my niece, Miss Brianna, has already finished and blocked her sweater. It was our auntie knit along. Um, I have gotten, I am at, actually at my second sleeve. I uh, have made modifications. So when I finish this, if you would like to replicate what I did, I don't like tight sleeves. So it took me three tries before I finally figured out a pattern that would accommodate my, my shoulders and my biceps. So it's a much, uh, has much more positive ease than, than the pattern calls for. So I am working on the cuff. I'm gonna bind off here in just a second. And then I will start picking up stitches for the, the front um, 
of the cardigan. It is a pattern by Elizabeth Smith. We, I am knitting it in Baraco uh, ultra chunky wool, which is nice. The sweater is actually knit on a size 10 needle. For the frugalometer, I want to make sure I'm consistent here. I gave it um, $3 signs for the fiber and $2 signs for the pattern. So what are you knitting? This was a new cast on, and of course, I'm in the middle of a row. Are you so, on? That's Sorry, right. I should um, have talked for a few more minutes. No, that's okay. This is the blended brioche baby blanket. How's that for alliteration? It is. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry by Lavanya Patricella. And I just started the brioche. So it was a garter border. And this is one color brioche. And eventually it will go to two color. And here are my two colors. So the pink you've seen, and then it's gonna be a gray. So our niece is having a baby, I think, is it February? Well, I don't know, that's a good question. Whenever it is, I hope to have it done. This yarn is new to me, NACO Elite oh. Baby Yarn. Um, it is a 100% acrylic, it is DK weight. Um, and it was very reasonably priced. Um, let's see, $6 for a skein. And I bet it feels like 100, it, feel, it is 100 grams. So I have four of them for the blanket. Ooh. So I think, uh, and what I love about baby blankets, if we give them to people is they, they need to be washable. Throw them in the washer, throw them in the dryer. So it is nice and squishy. So um, I'm liking it. So... <clears throat> It is knit on a US six. And I always, I, I'd be interested in what people think. This is a basic brioche pattern. So do I need to buy a pattern or should I just be able to figure it out? You know, I just decided I'm gonna buy the pattern so I don't have to spend all that time figuring out how many stitches to cast on, what size of needle to use. I was just gonna trust the pattern. Um, it was written for DK yarn and I've, knit several of the scales patterns and I like them. So I would say on the frugalometer, um, this is probably a one for me for yarn. And the pattern was probably um, two, three, three dollar, okay. dollar signs on the frugalometer. Um, yeah, and my gut tells me I'm gonna go rogue. <gasps> Once I start two color, that'll be my love. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to probably do the whole body of the baby blanket in two color and then end the other end of the blanket with gray, one color gray. Oh, now, yeah. who knows? Because it's a fade pattern. And I'm not, I didn't buy many colors and I'm not going to fade them in and out. Um, but yeah, um, started that this week and pretty mindless knitting for the garter edge. I tried doing brioche last night with the aunties um, knitting and I actually was able to do it. So that was reassuring. Ooh, you so, yeah. are mastering that technique. Well, and do you find ever, because I haven't brioche since I did this shawl, I needed to do it again, just to remind myself of the steps and remember how the pattern is written and, you know, get that, that um, rhythm, I guess, in my head of how things go. Because as soon as there's a mistake, now that you can see the brioche pattern, I can see mistakes, but it takes about six rows or okay. so before you start to see the pattern develop. And I always worry about what if I make a mistake in those six rows? <laughs> I'm not going to know it for another six rows. So yeah, so that is what um, is currently on my needles. Is there anything else on your needles? Same thing as last week. So I will just mention the products and show them to you quickly. Um, all of the notes I still have in my, in my Ravelry project page. Um, I have not worked at all on wingspan. This is a beautifully detailed, oops. Yeah, I think that's the right side. Beautifully detailed shawl by Kyle Bay that is I guess reflecting what the feathers of a bird look like. It is knit on a gradient from the blue brick. So I am just about ready to move into this lighter mint green. Oh, that'll be pretty. It, yeah, it is a pattern that I have to pay attention to. I can't go rogue on it, even though at some point it might become intuitive. I'm not there yet. And so on the frugalometer, 
$4 signs for the pattern, $4 signs, if not five for the, for the yarn. But I'm enjoying it. I'm on a size three and I'll eventually move to a size seven, so. No, I, I, cannot, I just enjoy watching that process I'm and watching colors change. That. And when I you just that. held it up, you can start to see kind of the feather where you. Oh yeah, oh good, I'm glad you can because yeah. I can see it. I'm beginning to see how the feathers are increasing. Yep. I'm upside down. Imagine that. I'm left-handed. Yeah, that there all... you can really see like the points of the feathers. Yep. Yep. I didn't so very see that pretty. before. Mm -hmm. What about you? What are you working on? Well, the other thing that? on my needles is a. Uh, I started last week. It is um, NYX by Melanie Berg. I'll show you a quick picture of it. Oh. <laughs> I think this came out a couple of months ago, maybe. Nix is um, a German British word for mermaid. And here is my progress. Look so, at you. I think last week I was down here. Yeah. So I finished section one, which is those eyelets. And of course, it's interesting because those eyelets are patterned. So you can see it there where they're all in a line. So as soon as you get off, it was pretty obvious. So I did tink a few times. And then I got to do the first slip stitch, slip stitch section to make it look like the mermaid. And so this is the last eyelet section. Now I just finished it. The rest of the shawl is this mm. until you get to the end again where you come back to this. So this is in the yarn suggested in the pattern. It's a German yarn. So I'm going to um, try my best to attempt to pronounce it. Pasquale Bellage. I bought it as a kit with the yarns that she used in the pattern. So um, I am liking it. It took me a while to get this. And here's the reason why is my brain went back to slip extravaganza. <gasps> And some of the slip stitch sequences from that shawl, this sequence is different. Uh -huh. And so I found myself sometimes having to go back because I was um, I was thinking I knew what I was doing, but I did not. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know if I can get this done by next week. I'm going to doubt it. But my goal is to finish this by the end of December because one of my 2020 goals was to knit three Melanie Berg shawls. And Imagine. so... Uh, that will, yeah. And I'll probably have the same goal next year, three more. At least, yeah. And you yeah. should, you like her. She's your I do. favorite designer, so yeah. of course. I like her a lot. Um, um, you have said a couple of things, Dawn, that I think is, that are worth mentioning. Both of those shawls, you were talking about how you could see errors in your fabric. I think in the knitting world, we call that being able to read your knitting, yep. right? I think that's an important um, bit of advice we can give to all knitters. Learn how to read your knitting so that you can spot the type of stitch and how it affects the fabric around it. And I don't have a good recollection of when I was able to learn to do that. It definitely wasn't in the beginning when I was a new knitter. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I could tell if there was a mistake and all I knew was I'd have to tear it back. Um, but I think the more you knit, like any other skill, probably the more you're able to troubleshoot mm -hmm. and figure out if that mistake is fixable without having to tear it all the way back, or is that your option? So, um, yeah, I like it. This yarn has some alpaca in it. So it has just that little bit of halo on it. And, um, I have to chuckle. So it said to use a US four in the pattern, I think four, three, US three. So I just go into my knitting bag, you know, which I have my needles separated by size. And I grab out a, th I, I think I tried a three, but the fabric was too tight. So I grabbed a four, but there's that in between size in millimeters. So I didn't grab a four, I grabbed a, a 3.25 millimeter as opposed to a 3.5. So when I went, when I thought it was time to upgrade, it was like, why do these needles feel the same? <laughs> Anyway, it was a whole disaster. So maybe there was some benefit to how you keep your needles in their original bags. Yes. Because, you know, there's just, even though it was just, you know, a little bit millimeter difference, <laughs> it was like, why is this not, you know, doing what I thought it was going to do? 
<laughs> and of course, it was user error. It had nothing to do with, um, uh -huh. yeah, again, lack of attention to detail, which I suffer from from time to time. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, resemble that remark. Um, and the only other thing on my needles, which I'm hoping to attend to this week, I would like to finish it after I finish my cardigan, if I have some good knitting time, is the little oh. crocus sweater. I'm still just on the back. I've made no progress. Cute, cute little sweater. You can see the fun little yoke on it. This is a pattern that is by, uh, I need to figure this one out here. Oh, it is by uh, Annie Dempsey. It is a, just a wonderful little pattern. But as I said last week, if you are a novice knitter or new knitter, you might have to fill in the blanks with some YouTube searches or some references in your knitting books. Cute little pattern. I am knitting it in Valley Yarns um, sock weight silk blend, which was very reasonable and actually a good replacement for a more expensive silk. And I wanted something too that could be washed. And so it is a washable fiber. And I am knitting that right now on a size three. I will move to, I've moved from a four to a three and I'll go back. And um, it is sweater number four in the hashtag six sweet sweaters. Six sweet sweaters. All right, yes. I have nothing else on my needles right now. So um, that's all I have. So any finished objects? Nope, have, it's the Dawn's Finished Objects show, well, so take it away. I don't have many, but I did finish a couple hats. Oh, good. This poor hat I, just like takes over this whole mannequin's head. This is the Autumn Weaves beanie. We did it as a cast on with uh, during our virtual knit night, and I am pleased as punch with this hat. Um, I use Simply Natural by Haiku in the Gold Crest colorway. Um, I think it makes, when you do this weave technique, I think it makes a nice fabric. And then last night with Knitting with the Aunties, we tried about 10 different pom-poms <laughs> on the hat and none of them worked. So um, I don't know if I'll, it'll just be no pom-pom or... Now, if I, I were to do this again, a pom -pom. I could, yeah. Next time, I think I would introduce a contrast color, maybe for this bottom edge, like a black, then I could have put a black pom-pom on or white and then put a white pom-pom. But you're right, not all hats need pom-poms. I can't believe I just said that. All right. <laughs> I can't either. I know. Stop, <laughs> stop. And then, of course, the um, other one does have quite a pom-pom on it. <laughs> <laughs> don't you love this look at the pom-pom is bigger than the hat but we'll talk about the hat first this is the um double thick cuff hat by stacy perry from very pink knits and this is dragonfly fibers traveler base which is a sport weight this is blue velvet and then this colorway i bought at stitches midwest um 2018 i think um, it's called Wrigleyville. So for our dearest sister who loves the Cubs, this is our tribute. And then you guys, I know, look at this pom-pom. Now, it's not the biggest pom-pom I have. I have a seven inch pom-pom. <laughs> we brought that out last night, but it had black tips at the end and you can't have that with yeah. a cubby hat. So unfortunately she's only getting a six inch pom-pom. <laughs> and look at, look how big it is when you see it. It's like, whoo. It so looks she, like there's a rabbit on the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleeping up there. Um, so we figured if we could put a GPS beacon in there, she will never get lost. <laughs> or if, when she's walking and she goes by your window, you would just see this pom-pom <laughs> moving. Um, yeah, maybe put some little fairy lights in there too. I don't know. Hey, while you have that up, Dawn, can I ask you to describe what's happening with that blue in the hat <laughs> for people that don't maybe not know this phenomenon. Okay, so when you use variegated yarn, you'll hear the term, the yarn is pooling. And that means it's gathering in similar locations to form a block of that color. So this blue is definitely pooling. Now, yay or nay on pooling, people like it or don't like it. There doesn't seem to be any happy medium. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of pooling myself, 
but it worked in this one. Um, I don't know. I think there are ways to break up the pooling. You would just take a chunk of your yarn out to mess up the pattern so that it doesn't pool. Or there are patterns written for intentional pooling and you can do that as well. So, um, and I, I gotta say, I like the double brim. I thought maybe it would be too thick, but I liked it. So you started with the provisional cast on, knit the seven, seven inches and then um, attached it underneath and then kept going. And so I asked my husband to try this on and he liked it so much that he has put in a request for one. And he rarely asked me to knit him anything. So that will be one of my future cast ons. He did like the autumn weaves too and thought he wanted that one until he tried this one on. But he loved that feel of that double brim around his ears. Are you so, going to do um, his in Green Bay colors? No, I think um, he, we went to the stash and he picked out a light gray, dark gray tweeds. Oh, yeah. And so it'll be the dark gray base. But there's enough of this yarn. I could do another hat. Um, I have enough of both of them left. So I may have to look at different patterns where I kind of mess with pooling a little bit. So um, because Nikki may just want another one because she likes oh. this one so well. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Why wouldn't she? I she think I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to increase the insurance on this when it goes in the mail, because I'm sure lots of people are going to want to intercept it. <laughs> For a variety of reasons. <laughs> they want that beacon on the top. <laughs> no doubt. And of course, that beacon uh, pom-pom came from an Etsy shop called Achilles Original Art. Um, and it's from Czechoslovakia. So <laughs> I did happen to get another package from Czechoslovakia this week. <laughs> so... <laughs> I have pom poms to keep me uh, plentiful through the winter, I think. So, yes, but that and is bad because when pom poms leave and then come back, you girl will be on the cutting edge. Well, and because they're so easy to detach now. Yeah, that's you know, true. Yeah. So, if you wanted to throw that in the wash, because that is washable, that's a super wash DK. So, Ooh, she could just nice. um, take the pom pom off and um, sell it at a garage sale or something. <laughs> oh my funny. goodness so well, that is listen, yeah. thanks for sharing your finished projects with us <laughs> i appreciate that if you don't mind we have another winner to announce well before you do that you should probably tell us what you're learning oh okay <laughs> so i am learning something always right thank you dawn for that reminder um this is a phrase that I coined. So if you find it on someone's wall or on their bumper <laughs> sticker, it came from me first. Um, if you go cheap, disappointment, you will reap. <laughs> the, the frugal one of the two has learned a lesson. Never did I think frugal and, and cheap were synonyms. I have never said that. Um, cheap to me is lower quality, right? Well, I ordered a little kit that had all sorts of stitch markers and knitting accoutrements in it and ordered it from um, online and I got it and it was cheap. I knew it. I knew what I paid for it, but I thought it would be nice to have on hand. Well, one of the items in that little kit was a row counter. And this is a row counter that many of us have seen. You twist the ends and it keeps track of what, what row you're on. Well, when I first pulled it out, I realized it was really loose. There's no tension. So it doesn't, in with that tension, it usually will sit on a number and you can hold your rows in place. Well, I knew it was kind of loose. So I was using it gingerly and just keeping it out of the way so that it didn't make any mistakes. Well, last night while knitting with the aunties, I'm knitting and knitting and knitting. And I realized, and I was using my row counter, that I did an entire repeat too many, which kind of frustrated me because now it's putsy. Now I have to either frog or tink and I'm trying to finish a sleeve and I have to go back and I'm like, how did I do this? Because here's another tidbit for, um, I guess I would say newer knitters or whomever, when I am doing decreases on anything, you can see where I will put 
stitch markers at the decrease. Now, when you learn how to read your knitting, you can see those stitches, but I always do it so I can quickly count and make sure the decreases on each stitch are equal, right? I couldn't figure out how I did that last night. I looked at my row counter. I knew I was right on the money. Um, anyway, it was later, much later in the night when I realized I must have bumped this cheap row counter and oh. changed the setting and didn't catch it. So it, it resulted in inefficiency and a loss of precious knitting time. As you all know, knitting time is precious for most of us. We just don't have an unlimited amount of it. And I thought, you know what? When I went cheap, I was disappointed, not only in how the product worked, but its effect upon my garment and what I was knitting. So if you buy cheap, disappointment you will reap. I have a question. Yes. Is there a question from the front? <laughs> <laughs> you use stitch markers. Ooh, I saw them. They were real stitch markers. They were. They were. And I have to tell you, these little light bulb things, I really like. However, they're pointed. They're sharp. <laughs> so you have to make that. I won't show you the Band-Aid to prove that. But <laughs> Um, anyway, yes, I do use these. You all think I don't use stitch markers. You know what I don't use? Those um, progress keepers. Okay. You need one of these? This is right side. RS, <laughs> right side. Everybody needs a right side marker. Don, if you don't have I one. My knitting, I know what the right side is. Well, it needs to say it. <laughs> so that if you put this down and pick it up six years from now. You'll know which is the right side. Well, that comment I resemble. <laughs> the six year party, yeah, I get that. All right, maybe I'll try it. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, that's what I learned. I am waiting with bated breath to hear what you learned because your your lessons, Dawn, are profound. <laughs> no, <they're> profound. <laughs> okay, here it is. I believe in UFOs. You believe. <laughs> Hey, that would stimulate a great family discussion <laughs> that many of our family members wouldn't argue. UFO, oh, I got to hear it. What do okay, you so a uh, UFO in the knitting world, of course, is an unfinished object. Mm -hmm. And so uh, knitters notoriously have many UFOs. And um, this is my last one. <gasps> ah! You so. sold out! girl I did so this is a pair of fingerless gloves and I, I asked this two-sided um this is a pattern I took a class on this pattern oh, these are still a little damp <laughs> that feels weird um <laughs> and the gal who taught the class had a pattern she kind of liked but made a lot of changes to it so then I have taken her pattern and made some changes to it to what I like so is that still a pattern or is it now a recipe I never know how that works but I have this pattern written up if anybody is interested. Well, it's not a pattern, it's a recipe. But um, you can see the beads. <laughs> so here's why I struggle with fingerless gloves. I want to be able to text. Okay. So I need my fingers available for texting. So that's why I like them. But mm -hmm. when I did these the first time, I had a beaded ring like this right here. There's another row of beads that went before the um, ribbing. But then when I'm driving, that that's right at the steering wheel. You know, so then I find myself kind of messing with that. So I took those beads out. And then I keep increasing the depth of the gusset. Yes. Because I like a roomy thumb. Yes, and I maybe agree. that's because I have bigger hands. And now if I were to do this one more time, which I probably will, I'm going to increase the number of rows of just plain knitting after I finish the cuff until I start the gusset. Oh, so that you have more, uh, that makes sense to me. Yeah, because yeah. I wish this was just down just a little bit more. And okay. of course I like the longer cuff. So if it's inside your coat, sure. you're okay. Now I've seen people that do the ribbing to about here and then flip it over. Mm -hmm. So oh, that like makes, yeah, so that makes sense. So anyway, 
Um, I just kind of have this written up just to, the way I think about doing it. So, but yeah, that is my last unfinished object. I have nothing other than you saw today on my needles. Oh, Dawn, that's impressive. And, you know, we've talked about this um, before. We might just have to keep up with the UFO club. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it would absolutely blend nicely with the Finnish Fixer Frog at Cal which were, is ongoing for us. But we might, just to help people, yep. use that little system that you introduced to us. Yeah, so the UFO clubs that I was part of once a month, like you listed 12 UFOs for the year that you wanted to work on. Not saying they have to be finished, but you just, they need to show them a little love. And then we randomly picked a number between one and 12 and whatever project number aligned with that number, you just worked, you showed that project a little bit of love. Mm -hmm. And because I was in a couple of them, it made it nice to be able. So this is a couple of years in the making now. Well, I bet I started it a year ago, right? January yeah. 2020. I think you did. And uh, they are done. Very so. good. Well, thanks for sharing what you're learning. And you we'd like first. to even do some more sharing. Uh, okay. Last night during Knitting with the Aunties, we had a drawing from our Finish Fixer Frog at Cal in Ravelry. And this episode's winner for our giveaway is nothing but knit. Miss Judy, congratulations. You're our winner for this episode. And we all agreed your slip stravaganza shawl was beautiful. Absolutely. Just beautiful. Thank you for making time to post it. Um, if you will, send us your mailing address and we will get that gift out to you soon. So thanks for participating in that. And then one other thing, um, we have one honorable mention this week and I am not going to give her Ravelry name because I forgot to ask permission, but each of us received a pattern as a gift from Miss Susan. And she sent just the most precious, actually kind of teared me up, um, little note with those patterns. And yeah. we can't express enough our gratitude for the community. And essentially she was just thanking us for having an option in, in a, a knitting community. But trust us, the bigger blessing is ours because yeah. you fill our hearts, you inspire us. Um, you remind us of the beauty of our fiber arts and the beauty of coming together and sharing something in common. So thank you so much, mm -hmm. darling. We sincerely appreciate your generosity. Absolutely. And just one other little reminder, next week we will be in episode 41, giving you a question to respond to in YouTube for our next drawing in episode 42. So just keep your eyes open and you will hear that question and see it in our show notes in a couple of episodes. And, and if I've forgotten anything other than what would Nikki say, you let me know, Dawn. But our mm -hmm. sister Nikki's quote for the week kind of, I think, was intertwined in both Dawn and I's knitting this past week. And so here it is. And for those of you who are new, our sister Nikki is our biggest cheerleader and she is our statistician. We don't even know what that means or why you would want one, but she does it and she does it well. And she is an avid golfer. So her golfing is her knitting, if you will. So if you'll listen, here's what Nikki would say. Putsy knitting is frustrating. It is frustrating in knitting, just like golfing behind slow golfers is putsy in golfing. But at the end of the day, you've at least accomplished what you've set out to accomplish. And so the putsiness of tinking or frogging or going back to correct mistakes isn't just something we knitters experience. It's a part of life. And so thanks, sis, for reminding us that really, at the end of the day, hmm, I wonder who says that. Um, it doesn't matter. We get our projects done, right? Absolutely. <laughs> You'll have to watch episode 30 and 39 to find out who always says at the end of the day. All right. <laughs> so I can't think of anything else. What about you, Dawn? I don't think so. I think uh, that's all we had on our agenda for today. <laughs> I think so, too. So 
Until our next episode, may your week be a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you in episode 41. Bye-bye. Bye.